Already we're heading into mid-April. Time is definitely flying by. It is a good day if you like neutral teleconnections. Not much going on in that department, though the Arctic Oscillation trending quite high, indicating a strong annular flow around the Northern Hemisphere that will keep the storm track active over the next couple of weeks. We take a look at the weather around the U.S. early this afternoon. A polar front moving through the central plains. Temperatures behind the front rather mild, looking at 50s and 60s for the most part. Ahead of the front, 70s and a few 80s starting up early this afternoon. The colder weather found in the northeastern U.S. temperatures almost down to freezing across the Great Lakes. And in the west coast region, ridging out ahead of this next weather system that's going to move on shore later on Thursday. When we have these subtle weather patterns in the lower troposphere, this is where the upper charts become even more important because the processes taking place at these levels are stronger than what we have at the surface. For example, a strong polar front jet right there in the northwestern region. We've also got an upper level cold front moving through Iowa and Nebraska, a strong jet max flowing through the central Great Lakes, and of course, strong ridging across the southwestern U.S., helping to bring those temperatures upwards. If we look at the trends over the next few days, we see amplification of these waves. The ridge builds more strongly into the northern Rockies. This trough digs into the southeastern states. And this channel jet starts flowing from North Dakota down into Arkansas later tomorrow night and into the southeastern states, Florida, Georgia, for Saturday. Upper level low crossing the central Rockies early on Saturday and then tracking very slowly offshore. This will keep the pattern kind of unsettled for at least a couple of days. Another upper level low moving through Montana and that'll shift into Minnesota and Wisconsin going into the early part of next week, then into Eastern Canada for midweek. And a bit of a wild card there off of California, a cutoff low. It looks like the models have been keeping this a little bit further offshore than the previous runs, but still that's something to pay close attention to. A very cold day once again in the northeastern U.S. Afternoon temperatures in the 30s across northern New England all the way down towards Syracuse and Buffalo. We had 40s from Boston to Scranton over to the Great Lakes, 50s from Virginia into the Midwest states. This week, Pacific system moving through the Corn Belt, rain from Chicago down to Indianapolis, snow from South Bend into Southern Michigan. All of that will be pushing eastward later tonight. In the southeastern U.S., pleasant weather. Widespread 60s this afternoon, 70s in Florida and the Gulf Coast region. Lots of flooding going on in the Ohio River Valley due to the wet patterns this spring. The problems will shift into the Mississippi River region later this week as the water flows downstream. At least 25 gauge stations were at major flood stage from Indiana, Kentucky to Arkansas. Total rainfall amounts over the past 30 days have been in the 15 to 20 inch range across a large area of western Tennessee and western Kentucky with over 10 inches from Cincinnati to the Arklatex. In the southern plains this afternoon, lots of sunshine. Temperatures were mostly in the 70s. We saw 80s across central and west Texas with a few 90s around Abilene. That weak cold front was heading south through Kansas and Oklahoma, bringing northwesterly winds. And those temperatures were on the mild side, 50s and 60s. But we had red flag warnings across northeastern Colorado into southeastern South Dakota. Strong northwest winds gusting of 50 miles an hour, kicking up that fire danger. And that is in the critical range in northeastern Colorado. Some pretty good weather across the southwest as well. Denver under a red flag warning today due to those strong northwest winds. Same for the San Luis Valley and the Walsenburg area along Interstate 25. Further south, 
we were looking at 60s and 70s in the Four Corners area. The Southwest Deserts, the heat has been cranking up. We're seeing upper 90s from Phoenix to Yuma, Tucson up to 93 degrees, and Las Vegas, Nevada up to 91. Warm in California as well, 80s through the San Joaquin Valley, 90s in the Mojave Desert. Los Angeles looking at 76 for this afternoon. The northwestern U.S. getting that break from the rainy weather. However, trouble once again offshore with a new Bear Clinic weather system and this little vortex off of southwestern Oregon. Yesterday, yeah, there you go, a very intense comet cloud system with convective elements moving onshore yesterday morning and some well-defined vortices out there in the Pacific. Now that did move inland yesterday afternoon and we got this convection out there in the northern Great Basin area. But finally, overnight, strong clearing, high pressure, and we're looking for a very cold night tonight. Temperatures down near freezing and even into the 20s in parts of the Columbia River Basin. We head out west into the Pacific, and there's our next weather system. That'll be affecting the northwestern U.S. later tomorrow. Alaska. It is fairly quiet, a little pocket of cold air north of the Seward Peninsula. Winter weather advisories tonight and overnight for parts of the Kenai Peninsula around Homer, looking for about three inches of snow with southwest winds gusting to 35 miles an hour, and also around Whittier, moderate to heavy snow, four to eight inches. There, the Portage Valley up to 10 inches. Things have calmed down further west, finally. Canada. No major issues. We've got that ridging there in British Columbia. We had fog advisories around Fort McMurray, but otherwise the prairies looking pretty good. Even Quebec and Ontario clearing underneath this ridge, but up in western Ungava Bay, the blizzard warning continues for those communities. We look at the precipitable water values. Those are running about 0.75 in the Corn Belt. And that increases a little bit as we get increased moisture advection and increased proximity of that tropical air. Then going into Thursday and Friday, more moisture down there in the Gulf Coast region, but it keeps getting pushed southward. For Saturday, some moisture return develops from Texas to Nebraska. Precipitable water values rise up to about an inch in the northern plains. Things shift eastward and Maybe by Tuesday, we're looking at some widespread convection up and down that line. Moisture return once again for Wednesday and Thursday. So we're cycling very quickly back and forth with dry advection and moist advection. So we're just not holding that moisture in place for very long. And that's going to be the last frame that I have. This is interesting. This looks like a strong Pacific weather system starting its trek into the southwestern states. So let's look at our forecast and put the fronts into motion. As mentioned, a cold night across the northwest, many areas dropping to near freezing or even further into the 20s. Weak system moves through the Midwest and into the lower Great Lakes overnight. We'll see some of that snow moving into Michigan, other areas just getting rain. By tomorrow morning, much of Illinois blanketed with fog. Then as we go forward into Thursday, a lot of that rain moving into the northeastern states, parts of northern Pennsylvania, getting snow along with southern Ontario and the Adirondacks. That cold weather will remain locked in across the northeast, some moderation in New England, but it will stay in the 40s across much of the area. A slight risk of severe thunderstorms in the southeastern states, especially northern Mississippi, along with northern Alabama, western Tennessee, and eastern Arkansas. Fortunately, a very minimal tornado risk, but we could see strong downburst winds and large hail. A hot day across the southwestern deserts, Phoenix expecting 100, upper 90s across the rest of that desert region. Rain starts in across Washington, and you can see that make its trek into Thursday evening and Friday morning. 
for Friday, we're looking at a rainy pattern all the way from the Carolinas into New York. And with this little frontal boundary intersection, I would not be surprised to see some severe weather in North Carolina or Virginia. In Texas, cold front sinking south. Highs in the 70s from Charleston all the way back to Dallas. 60s from Atlanta to Memphis. A very hot day for the southwest, looking for 102 at Phoenix and Yuma. And we find scattered rain across northern Idaho as that system moves inland. We could see snow in the higher elevations above six to 7,000 feet initially, but that will be dropping. Then for Saturday, Here's our setup on Saturday evening. This Pacific system pushing into the northern Rockies and the Great Basin. Rain moves up into the northeastern region Saturday. Snow in the mountains. Gloomy for Boston and Springfield. Massive warm-up in the Great Plains. We're looking for widespread 90s from west Texas to western Arkansas. 92 for Goodland. 93 for Lamar and Pueblo, Colorado up to 91. Denver up to 86. And then just skipping ahead to Sunday, this Pacific system crosses the northern plains. We'll see that snow in Montana working down into the lower elevations, possibly down to about 4,000 feet, crossing Billings, maybe down to 3,000 feet. Meanwhile, in Texas, widespread 90s from South Texas all the way to Southern Kansas. Then we go into Monday. Storm system in the Great Lakes, snow returns to Minnesota. Continued hot in Texas south of this front, but a little bit of relief on the way. And we'll see that cold front drop into the deep south for Tuesday, 70s all the way down towards Alabama and North Texas. Then we get into the later periods, a series of weak systems moving through the Midwest. And of course, California. A lot of questions. What's going to happen with that weather system off of the southwest coast? And as we close out this very quiet episode of Forecast Lab, I want to thank our Patreon supporters, people like John Buma, Ed Davies, James Flanagan, Haley, Mike Lammers, David Moore, Ross Reynolds, Jason Rourke, James Taylor. Thank you very much for that support. And of course, another way you can support me is to go to weathergraphics.com and pick up a forecast book or head to social media and let people know that this channel is here. We could always use more viewers and I appreciate that. All right, hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care and we will see you once again for the show on Friday evening. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.